Question, what's more rare than one of only 23 pre-production 63 Corvette prototypes? A red convertible with fuel injection. What's more rare? How about three of them with sequentially numbered VIN? To mark the 10th anniversary of the unveiling of the first Corvette, General Motors ramped up the brand with the second generation and introduced the moniker Stingray for 1963. The 63 Corvette was an immediate head-turning hit, with more than 10,000 convertibles and an equal number of first offered coupes produced. The split rear window on the coupe made the car an instant classic as it was discontinued after only one year of production. The design and manufacturing of the very first 63 Corvettes is notched with an asterisk in Corvette history. There is ample reference in paperwork and articles to suggest a so-called pilot line for the initial cars produced. However, not everyone agrees with that term. What is known is that only about two dozen pre-production 63 Corvettes were built. It should be noted that during early development of the 63, the terms pre-production and pilot line were frequently interchanged with prototype. With the prototype rapidly reaching its completion and evaluation date, skilled assemblers work round the clock to meet predetermined build schedules. Soon, the prototype interior is completed. The 63 prototypes were tweaked while sharing the line with the last 62 models being produced. In this photo, while workmen paint the body of a 63 prototype, the double exposed headlights of a 62 Corvette can clearly be seen on the production line in the background. Only a handful of those first pre-production cars are known to exist today. Virtually all were convertibles. And a breathtaking trio of them all restored to pristine condition and all well optioned with fuel injection and more can be found in Louisiana under single ownership. These three cars that I have are considered prototypes, and they're, they're built totally different than a production car. Uh, the, all, all the body panels are built on a mahogany wood buck, where it, it would be either a male or female, depending on what the panel is, whether it's an inner fender or the outer fender. And they were built with hand-laid fiberglass. So these cars are considered prototype pre-production and, and they handmade, instead of like the tooling of a production fender was in this tool. They didn't do it with these cars. They just had a piece of wood that was shaped like the fender and they laid the fiberglass on. That's why it's so crude looking. A number of the original pre-production cars, including Pete Vaccari's three, were produced as red convertibles. While red Corvettes are striking in any model, Red was frequently chosen in prototypes because it easily showed any imperfections. But what might have been seen at the time as imperfections or other differences, either in the exterior appearance or the interior of the car, now lend credence to the uniqueness of each car being a rare pre-production vehicle. You know, the consoles are different. The handbrake is a 62 Nova handbrake. It's not the chrome T-handle. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but when you start looking at it, there are a lot of features that are not in the production cars. The clock's different. The glove box door's different. They use 62 carpet. You know, the, the gauges, the bezels are, are real thicker, where I think the production cars are half inch. These are three quarter bezels. You know, they're bolder, bigger. 
The fuel injection units lacked the iconic Corvette crossed flags, and roughness around the seams adds evidence that these cars were pre-production. When they, these prototypes, everything they made for these cars were sand-casted. It wasn't in a die for a production thing. They would actually make a mold in sand, and they'd pour it, the aluminum in it. The, the housing really crude looking, because it's not really smooth, because it was done in sand. An extraordinary set of historical black and white photographs taken during the prototype build in 1962 provides undeniable forensic evidence about one of Vicari's convertibles, VIN number 16. Among the 120 pictures is one showing a body on a chassis with no instrument panel or steering column. It's the only photo showing both a VIN tag and a body trim tag. Though the photo was not clear enough to show the actual VIN, during a 2014 body off restoration of number 16, a similar photo was taken of the stripped interior dash area. That photo shows visible scratches beside the VIN tag and a large filler smear on the firewall. Both align perfectly with the original photo of the car on the production line conclusive evidence of the car's pre-production ancestry. As with the pilot line versus prototype issue, conflicting information can be found on the exact number of prototype Corvettes built for the 63 production run, but the generally accepted total is quite low. We've got the register, we've figured out that there are seven cars that's left. Now, a lot of them were between 23, 23 bodies, let's say. In the registry, there's, there's a lot of blank spots. Current research indicates there are two pre-production 63s in California, including VIN number three. Another is reportedly located in North Dakota. VIN number 18 is thought to be in Alabama, and a split window coupe is in England where we got down to probably a, a total of eight or nine that were literally cars that you could drive. But there's only seven that's left. Not only does Pete Vaccari have three of the seven or so known 63 prototype Corvettes remaining, but his cars, quite exceptionally, have sequentially numbered VINs. These three, Vins 15, 16, 17, are, are very rare and unique. They're all red convertibles. Um, 15 only has, was only delivered with a convertible top. It did not have a hard top. Where 16 and 17 were two tops. When I bought 16, it was a nice driver, but I wanted it perfect. So I did a body off on that. Uh, I bought 15, that had already had a frame off on it. And then when I bought 17, it needed to frame off. The heritage of these three unique Corvettes owned by Pete Vaccari dates back to a special time in Corvette history. They were part of a small group of 63 Corvette prototype cars whose testing was spearheaded by the master himself, Zora Duntall, who oversaw two legendary drivers, Dick Thompson and Sam McDonald. Their purpose? to evaluate a Stingray convertible and a Stingray fastback. Two prototypes which reflect a full decade of sports car experience. Worth noting is the fact that as the cars exit the track, an engineer walks over to the coupe and taps the two-pronged knockoff spinner. Only pre-production cars had two-pronged spinners. Production models had three. For a great many Corvette enthusiasts, no era of Corvette history can compare to the short period of the second generation, 1963 to 1967, commonly referred to as the mid-years. These are the cars that started all of that. This is the start of the mid-year. I mean, these cars started the mid-year, and there's only like seven left in the world, and 
there's these three are together and matching numbers and beautifully restored. Now, with the chase, the acquisitions, the restorations, and the pride of ownership under his belt, Pete Vaccari believes it's time to pass that chapter along to a new owner. He's decided to sell his unique collection of sequentially numbered 63 pre-production Corvette convertibles. Placing a value on these incredibly rare automobiles is, at best, difficult. While the marketplace will ultimately determine value, it must be said that, of late, the very limited production L88 Corvettes has reached stratospheric prices at auction and private sales. The 1963 Vaccari pre-production Corvettes were roughly one-tenth of the number of L88s manufactured over a three-year period. And you know, I would really hate to see those cars broke up. I mean, the last time they were together, it was in September of 62 in St. Louis. For, you know, to sell them to three individual people would be just devastating to me because I've worked so hard to put them together. But one person should step up and buy them all. For that one person, or perhaps more, such a singular opportunity of ownership like the three Corvettes themselves, is extremely rare.